interesting thing about the study is, uh, which included patients with platinum resistant and platinum refractory, is that the Avelumab um, uh, by itself had a very, very low response rate in this population, 3.7%. When we know that the Avelumab, a single agent uh, in the biggest study that I mentioned earlier, the presented at ASCO 2016, the response rate was 9.7%. So, so we saw a, a, a much lower response rate. So it's not entirely clear why that happened. Similarly, the doxyl response there was lower than what we've seen as monotherapy. The objective response rate of the combination of Avelumab and doxyl was 13.3%. So not, not bad for a, for a platinum resistant and refractory population and clearly better than the, the response rate that we saw in, uh, in the Avelumab alone and the doxyl alone. But that unfortunately did not translate in a statistically significant progression-free and overall survival. So uh, we really need to see more uh, uh, the data about uh, why that is, but uh, uh, but but I, I still think that. Uh, the, the, the fact that this study was negative should not necessarily, um, uh, you know, uh, make us not further pursue combinations of chemotherapy and immunotherapy in ovarian cancer because we've seen in other tumor types that chemo chemotherapy combinations with immunotherapy have been highly successful. So, so I think that we need to choose wisely the setting, we need to choose wisely the drug that we're going to use, and, uh, and, 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 and learn from uh, the studies that that have been previously done to, to rationally design uh, further studies. But I, I really do think that uh, combinations of chemotherapy and immunotherapy are here to stay. And I don't think that, that this study should deter us from uh, further pursuing these combinations. Because I think there is a clear good rationale behind those.